everybody. I'm Chad Rosenberg with Rosenberg and Parker, and uh, I hope everyone's having a terrific RIMS, even if it's a virtual RIMS. Hopefully, today we'll be together next year again in person and shaking hands and doing all the things that we used to do. But in the meantime, it's my great pleasure to uh, sit down today again with Dave Cooper. And Dave and I have had a number of chats, and, and uh, we did a thing called Shirt Chat, Shirt Chat not long ago on our website or at the, I guess, sort of the beginning, the middle of the pandemic. Uh, and here we are, hopefully towards the end of the pandemic, uh, we'll have to see, but, and I think that's part of the thing we're gonna talk about is the fact that we still have a lot of uncertainty going out there, going on out there. Um, there are multiple vaccines available. Many of us have been vaccinated. Dave, I assume you've had at least one shot so far? None. Oh, okay. Still waiting. I've had one, getting my next one at the end of the week, which is great. Um, but there's still a tremendous amount of uncertainty out there, just in terms of the pandemic, the economy, people's jobs, the socio-political climate and so forth. And so I've invited Dave to join me to talk about decision-making in an uncertain world. And I think it's safe to say that there's always a lot of uncertainty, uh, obviously more in the past year and today than and in, in recent years, but uh, Dave, we wanna let you help us, guide us with given your background uh, on how to make decisions in this very uncertain world. So Dave, with that, uh, could you maybe tell us a little bit about something, tell us about your background, what makes you qualified to talk to us about this topic? <laughs> Uh-oh, yeah. um, I'll give you a little bit about my background. Sure, I think a lot of people already know. Former Navy SEAL, I was a kid headed to med school out of college, um, took a, uh, a hard right turn and went into the SEAL teams really uh, because I wanted to see the world, you know, adventure and, and all that good stuff, not necessarily because I was service minded. I thought it would just be for a couple of years and it ended up being for, for 25 years. And I finally retired at the, at the end of 2012, really on the heels of, the, of what many are familiar with, the Bin Laden raid. And, you know, at that point, too old to go to med school, but not too old to go to graduate school. So I went back to my Really, my first love, the sciences, studied complex system science at, uh, at Oxford and at HEC, really complex system social science, right? Really about how, how, how big systems change. Um, with the intent of taking that into the world of businesses to help people and businesses, uh, you know, uh, enact these positive change um, projects, if you will. And that's what I do these days as a coach and a consultant. I really deal in the world of change. Uh, I bring my experiences from the SEAL teams, really uh, obviously a turbulent uh, environment that we lived in, particularly from 2001 to 2012. Uh, but then I back that, those experiences up with a good bit of scholarship as well. Well, I think you're understanding things just a little bit because we know that you weren't just in a SEAL team. You were in what, what, the, what they call it, um, um, what, we would, what we know is SEAL Team 6, right? From the from the movies and TV and everything and uh, and what you called what what did they call it the development group that's right, right. So group. I spent nineteen of my twenty five years at the development group there you go. Last so, so not just seals which are elite enough as it is but the the most elite of the group um, so uh, obviously as a seal you deal with a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. right a lot of uncertain environments and I think one of the things that struck me about about your years and, uh, as that, because you and I have chatted a lot about it, is that you always tried to create as much certainty as possible whenever you did a mission, right? So you, as you like to say, you always went into missions that you felt like you knew you could win, right? You didn't want to go into missions that, um, that had as, you wanted to minimize that uncertainty as much as possible. And I would assume a lot of that would translate over into, into things, into what we all have to deal with in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, you bring up a good point there. That's really about reversibility, and, and I can talk about that. But we went into many of these uncertain situations knowing that we could reverse our decisions. Um, many people get hung up on status. Um, that wasn't something that, you know, was particularly for the operators, we weren't hung up on status. Uh, we weren't hung up on how people might perceive us if we changed our minds. So reversibility is a big aspect of making decisions. I always look for decisions that are reversible. And in fact, most of them are. Even the Bin Laden raid 
uh, was you know something we could have backed away from at any particular time. Same way with, um, I think most people are familiar with the Captain Phillips rescue, right? If, or if maybe well, they made a movie out of it, so yeah, I hope seen the movie, it. right? Uh, yeah. Largely false, but uh, you know, <laughs> well, one aspect of that is that the snipers, the SEAL snipers, were the ones who came up with the ruse to get those pirates to show themselves. Uh, but at every step along the way, if, you know, if, if the pirates had not shown themselves, they could have backed away from it. But, but yeah, that's an aspect of, uh, of making decisions. It's part of a framework that we all use. But, you know, I would tell you just in general that, you know, decision making is not really sexy stuff. It's not like we set out to uh, you know, grow up to say, hey, I'm going to become a decision maker when I grow up. Um, but it's absolutely vital. I think it's, you know, it's one of those things we construct under the big tent of all things leadership. And if, I'm blown away, but if you were to look at Google Scholar, right, which I do all the time, and you, you, know, you Google decision-making, you're going to get about two, two million hits, right, for books and articles on decision-making. Uh, and if you then do leadership, you're going to get about four million hits on books and articles and stuff like that. So, you know, that reminds us that decision-making is about half of what leaders do at, at any level. So we have to consider that, you know, just, just today, you and I are going to make hundreds, if not thousands of decisions. And, uh, you know, most of those we're unaware of, but it, that happens whether we're leading an organization, whether we're leading a team or we're leading a family. And I think, uh, you know, most, most of those decisions will be uh, decisions that, that are, you know, made in a, with a view toward a, an uncertain future, right? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen for dinner and stuff like that? So viewed that way, decision-making become, becomes, you know, pretty important stuff. You got to read the 2 million books and papers? No, <laughs> unless you're, you're super motivated, right? You go ahead. But I think one of the things about d making decisions in an uncertain environment, it's this is the normal way we live, right? We're just not aware of it. So a classic example is most of us have no idea what we're going to have for dinner tonight, but we're going to figure it out, right? That's, you know, uh, and sometimes, it, you know, we, we roll with it. We run right up until the last minute, and sometimes it turns out pretty good. Marriage is this, the exact same way. We have no idea, for those of us who are married, how a marriage is going to turn out, right? But we dive in and start, you know, swimming for the yonder shores of marital, marital bliss, uh, without any real idea of how it's going to turn out. So we instinctively tend to reframe these things as, uh, you know, to be optimistic. So that's also a good practice. Have a little optimism in there. Well, the and one they always thought, uh, you know, we, mo many of us can relate to is having kids, right? As they say, there's no, there's no owner's manual. You just are kind of thrown into this and you have to make decisions as from when to change a diaper to, uh, you know, all the way to where they're going to go to college uh, someday down the road. So a lot of this and, and bazillion uh, decisions in between. And so maybe you could take us through using all your training and education and and uh, experience with all your your clients. Um, walk us through what, what is the decision making process look like in what you know, when you're dealing with uncertainty and and again, and especially relevant now, given the fact that we are still in the middle of a crazy and, and uh, unprecedented time that has created a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Yeah, it's a good process is a good word here. I tend to use the word framework, but we did use a framework in the SEAL teams um, you know, because people tend to think, well, because you're Navy SEALs, you went into all these uncertain environments, obviously you've got some kind of magic.